Welcome back to the story of liberty. This is your host, John Bowen. It was on July 2nd, 1775, that George Washington was stunned by the utter lack of discipline among the 13,000 troops casually encamped around Boston. But there was a change in attitude of that Continental Army when General George Washington took control. It was rapid and dramatic. The day after Washington formally took control, things changed. Discipline and more discipline, that was the rule of that summer. Men learned how to march and drill, but more importantly, they learned how to obey their commander. An astonishing transformation took place. The Continental Army began to become an army in fact, as well as in name. In all but a few, with big egos, gave credit to Washington. But he, in turn, was quick to give credit to God. For he knew God was responsible for the victory. Others knew it too. Throughout America, certain committed ministers, pastors, were reminded of their responsibility. And they told their congregation that It was only through God's continuing mercy that America had fared as well as she had, and that repentance, not strength of arms, would decide the outcome. In most of these sermons, not only was there a strong emphasis on the need for individual repentance before God, but there was a clear call on Americans to renew their covenant commitment to one another. Nor were these exhortations of the ministers confined just to words. These men did not hesitate to put their own lives on the line. During the battles of Lexington and Concord, Chelsea's minister, Phillips Payson, he captured two British supply wagons single-handedly. John Craighead raised a company of militia from his parish and he himself led them to join Washington in New Jersey, where it was recorded that he fought and preached alternately. So numerous, in fact, were the fighting pastors that the British referred to them as the Black Regiment. And they blamed them for much of the resurgence, the zeal of the colonial troops. One of the most colorful examples is what happened in a small Lutheran church in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. One Sunday morning in 1775, a 30-year-old pastor, Peter Mullenberg, delivered a stirring sermon on the text. For everything there is a reason. For everything there is a season. And a time for every matter under heaven. Ecclesiastics 3.1 He reached the end of his sermon and he said a solemn prayer and Then he continued to speak. In the language of the Holy Writ, there is a time for all things. There is a time to preach and a time to fight. He paused and then he threw off his pulpit robe to reveal to his startled congregation the uniform of a colonel in the Continental Army. And now is a time to fight. He thundered and then he called out. Roll the drums for recruits. The drums rolled, and that afternoon he marched off at the head of a column of 300 men. His regiment was to earn fame as the 8th Virginia, and Pastor Mullenberg was to distinguish himself in a number of battles, rising to the rank of a brigadier general in charge of Washington's 1st Light Infantry Brigade. There you have it, folks. A pastor taking off his robe and saying there's a time to preach and there's a time to fight. And now we must fight.